بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا مولانا محمد عبده ورسوله اما بعد وعن ابي عبد الرحمن عبد الله بن عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنهما قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه واله وسلم يقول ان طلق ثلاثه رهط ممن كان قبلكم حتى اووا المبيت الى غار فدخلوه فانحدرت صخره من الجبل فسدت عليهم الغار فقالوا انه لا ينجيكم من هذه الصخرة الا ان تدعوا الله بصالح اعمالكم فقال رجل منهم اللهم كان لي بوان شيخان كبيران وكنت لا اغبق قبلهما اهلا ولا مالا فنا ابي طلب الشجر يوما فلم اريح عليهما حتى نام فحلبت لهما وغبوقهما فوجدتهما نائمين وكرهت ان اغبق قبلهما اهلا او مالا فلبثت والقدح على يدي ان انتظروا استيقظاهما حتى ورق الفجر والصبيه يتضاعون عند قدمي فاستيقظا فشرب غبوقهما اللهم ان كنت فعلت ذلك ابتغاء وجهك ففرج عنا ما نحن فيه من هذه الصخره فانفرج شيئا حتى لا يستطيعون الخروج منهم قال النبي صلى الله عليه واله وسلم وقال الاخر والله ما كانت لي كانت لي بنت وعم كانت احب الناس الي وفي روايه كنت احبها كاشد ما يحب الرجال النساء فاردتها على نفسها فامتنعت مني حتى المت بها سنه من السنين فجاءتني فاعطيتها عشرين و100 دينار على ان تخلي بيني وبين نفسها ففعلت حتى اذا قدرت عليها وفي روايه فلما قعدت بين رجليها قالت اتق الله ولا تفض القاتم الا بحقه فانصرفت عنها وحب وهي احب الناس الي وتركت ذهب الذي اعطيتها اللهم ان كنت فعلت ذلك ابتغاء وجهك ففرج عنا ما عنا ما نحن فيه فانفرجت الصخره غير انهم لا يستطيعون الخروج منها الى اخر الحديث وكما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على محمد نبيك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي رب زدني علما اللهم انا نسالك الاخلاص والتوفيق والقبول الحمد لله ده لاست حديث اون ذا تشابتر اللي خلاص ان كتاب رياض الصالحين امام نبي رحمة الله عليه has brought the long hadith نبي صلى الله عليه واله وسلم has given an example of the three individuals of the previous nation who were traveling and whilst they were traveling either it was night time or there was a heavy rain and to take refuge they went into the cave now the mouth of the cave was closed by a rock that rolled down and whilst they were inside the cave they didn't assure that how can we come out of this cave now we don't have any technology we don't have any means of gaining help and asking for help so the mashwara was then and the mashwara was then that we should make dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the dua they said that we will mention any deed that we have done in our life and we will take the means of that deed and the wasila of that deed and we allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hopefully accept our dua so the first person made the dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in his dua he made the mention of his khidmat of his parents and we discussed in detail about the khidmat of the parents and the virtues and the lessons that we learned from the dua of the first individual previously we were on the second individual who made dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this second individual he made dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh allah when i was younger i had a cousin sister of mine who i had so much muhabbat and love for and i used to look for any chances and opportunities to express my love for her so one time it came that she became very uh, in uh, desperate need and help and it was a era of drought so she came to me for help So I said to her that, look look I'm going to help you however this condition and the condition is that look you give me the chance of whatever desire I have for you or whatever love I have for you or you want you know you allow me to fulfill my desire so because she was in need at that time she agreed and she said okay so the time was fixed at the time where he had to hand over the money and she had to hand herself over to him that time when the hadith explains that falamma qa'atu bayna rijlayha it was a time where i was sat between her legs the time it was a very peak time where i was able to fulfill my desire with her there was nothing stopping us 
However, what did she say? She said, Ittaqillah, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when she mentioned your name, when she said fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that hit me and that made me stop. So oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at that time, if I did that amal, if I refrain from fulfilling the desire and fulfilling and carrying out that evil sin and that, did, that deed, if I did that amal only for yourself, only for your sake, then, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remove us from this difficulty. So when the first person made the dua, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that the dua was accepted and the rock slightly moved. However, it wasn't enough for them to leave and come out of this cave. When the second dua, the second person made the dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also accepted the dua of the second individual and the rock slightly moved a bit more, but it wasn't enough for them to leave and exit from this cave. So we were discussing the dua of the second individual that what quality this individual had. What were the sifat that this uh, male and the female, the cousin sister of his had, that because of that quality and because of that deed, because of that sifat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the dua. One of the quality is that ittaqillah, the word taqwa, the sifat of taqwa and the quality of taqwa. So we were discussing this quality here in the last few lessons, that what is taqwa? We mentioned what the definition of taqwa, then we were mentioning few of the benefits of taqwa. Nowadays, we you know, tend to do something when we know the features behind it, when we know the benefits behind it. If a person is giving you two phones, an iPhone and an Android, if you know the benefits of them, if you know the features behind it, we will choose to our likes, okay, we like you know, uh, Android better than the iPhone because we like the features in it, it's more compatible for ourselves. So when we know the benefit of something, we are derived, derived towards it and we're driven towards it and we are inclined towards it. So because of this, we were talking about the taqwa because taqwa is an important sifat, very important you know, ingredient in our life. We need to have this quality and sifat in order to be successful in this world. Taqwa is to carry out the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's one of the explanations that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to do, we do that. But whatever he has told us to refrain from, we refrain from that. So if a person has this consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that what does my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want from me in this time of then I will do that. If a person has this consciousness, then it will help him to build this quality of taqwa. Now, the, one of the benefits of taqwa we mentioned previously is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wipe away the sins. Now, these benefits are mentioned from the Quran Sharif. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase the reward of our a'mal. Increase the reward of our a'mal. The reward of our a'mal will be increased because of this quality of taqwa. Number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors of provisions for us. From the doors, of, uh, from a place where we would never ever think of it. It's something that we would not even have in our minds. And we are you know, in need of this. We are in need of this. If you look around, the cost of living is going up and up. And people have this fear that, you know, how am I going to be able to uh, provide for myself? How am I going to be able to provide for my family? How am I going to survive in this day and age where the cost of living is going higher and higher? The cost of petrol going higher and higher. If you look at the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the prices that's gone up, every year is going up. You know, there was a time, I've got to be able to research here from the RSC website. It says in 2000, in 2000 the, the price of diesel was 81 pence. In 2000, the price of diesel was 81. Then you went to 78, 75, you went down, then you went up, up, up again. And now the same price of diesel is about 173 pence. 1.73, 1.83, etc. So if you look at it in this way, it seems that how am I going to survive? How am I going to provide? How am I going to be able to be able to uh, be able to provide for myself and be able to be stable in my life? But if you look at the Quran virtue, the ayat of the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He says that if a person he has taqwa inside his life, if a person refrains from sins, if a person stays away from sins, then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will open the doors of provisions for him from the places where he would never even think of. Another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions that walaw anna ahlal qura amanu wa taqaw la fatahna alayhim barakatim min as samai wal ard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he talks about of the people of the qura and the people of the town. That if they had two qualities, one quality is belief and iman. If they had faith, wa taqwa and they had wa taqaw and they had taqwa inside their lives. So if they had Iman, they have faith. Alhamdulillah, we are born with Iman, we have Iman, we are with Iman, Alhamdulillah. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve our Iman, preserve our faith. And the second quality that we should have and we should work upon and make it stronger and stronger, it says here, is adopt taqwa. 
We adopt taqwa, then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do? لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down upon us multitude of blessings from the, uh, uh, from the skies, from the above, from the heavens, such as the rain, and from the ground as well, from wal ard, such as the crops and minerals and etc. What we need from the ground, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for us. So we need both. We need something from the uh, heavens as well. We need the rain, we need the water. And like that, we need something from the ground as well to nourish our physical body. So if a person adopts the taqwa, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for that person. And in the Ma'arif al-Quran, in this explanation, it is written, the Mufti Shafiq has mentioned, that barakah can be explained in different ways. It can be explained in different ways. One of the ways is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases the quantity of that thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases the quantity in something. For example, he gives an example in there, that in the time of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from a small pot of water, large amount of people drank from it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases the quantity in that thing. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to fulfill your need from a small thing. From a small amount, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to provide for a large amount of people and good amount of people. That's one way of explanation of barakah in the person's uh, life. The second explanation of this barakah, Allah uh, the Mufti Shafi'i Uthmani rahmatullahi has mentioned that the thing does not increase. The quantity does not increase itself. However, the efficiency of that thing increases. The usefulness of that increases. For example, he says that if you observe in our household, something is there and it lasts for a, it lasts for a very long time. Something that we may have, that it may last for a very long time. A father, a son goes to his father, you're talking about barakah, barakah, what barakah do we have in our life? You know, we've got such a small house. So he takes him to the kitchen and takes him to the boiler. And he goes, look, this boiler has been working since before you were even born and it's still working. The same boiler has been using for a number of years. So this is the same thing is still there. It hasn't increased, but the barakah in that and the usefulness of that has increased. So this is what he's explanation, explaining. And he says another example of this is that sometimes a single morsel of food becomes a source of great strength for us. On the other side, we have a large amount of food. We have so much food, but it produces no strength. So that means there's barakah in the first one. There's no barakah in the second one. <clears throat> like that he explains that sometimes we do a task in half an hour. And the same task when we do it other times, it takes four or five hours. So the task that was the same task. But in the first time we did it, it took us a half an hour to complete that task. In the other time, it took us time. So in the first time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prayed barakah in that time for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had put barakah in there that we were able to fulfill that task in a short time. However, one thing he explained is that we need to try to understand and we shouldn't be, uh, uh, you know, misunderstand this point by saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases in something. What he says is that prosperity and good health and large amount of wealth is not a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us. A person has good amount of wealth, he has good health, that's not a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with us. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in another part of the Quran, فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى إِذَا فَرِحُوا بِمَا أُوتُوا وَخَذْنَاهُمْ بَغْتَةً فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْلِسُونَ that there were people where they had forgotten the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had forgotten what they had received by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do, do to them? He opened the doors kulli shay for everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided them with everything. However then, All of a sudden we took them. All of a sudden we punished them. So having large amount of wealth, having good health, having so much does not mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us. Sometimes good amount of wealth can be a test for us. And we can see in our life as well. When you come for Fajr Salah, Alhamdulillah, those people who are weak and old, mashallah, they walk. Or they may have a normal car, which they've had for years and years and years. Alhamdulillah, they're able to drive themselves or they're able to walk to, to the masjid themselves. And we have people who are young, mashallah, they're driving luxury cars, but they're unable to come to the masjid. Now for the first, second individual, that amount of wealth or that means of transport is a test for him. Is that means of transport able to take him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is he able to take him to the masjid or not? If he is, if that means of transport is driving him to the masjid, then that means barakah. But if it is not taking him towards the masjid, is it not taking him towards the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That means this is a test for him. So a person shouldn't think that, you know, I've got so much wealth, that means Allah is pleased with me. No. In this world, there are people who don't even believe in Allah, who don't even believe in any God at all, but Allah opens the doors for them. 
So that's a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not exactly pleased with it. It may be a test for us. So then he explains that how do you differentiate between the two situations? Where on one side the baraka from the skies and the heaven and the earth is there for us. On the other side we say that it could be a test. So how can we differentiate? He explains in, uh, in the explanation is that the ni'mah and the baraka if it's short-lived, it lasts for a very short time then that could mean that this is a sign of the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the other side, something that which is lasts for longer. And that could be a sign of iman and taqwa. Then he explains again that the clear signs are very difficult for us to understand. However, the awliya and the, the, awliya and the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say that if the ni'mat, if the good health, if the good amount of wealth makes us more grateful for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes us more grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He drives us towards the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then this could mean that this is the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the true barakah. But if that same amount of wealth tends us to take us towards sins, it, it makes us involved in more sins, then that could be the sign of the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what we need to check in our life that Alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for us. But the thing, the ni'mad that we have, we're able to wake up Alhamdulillah healthy, wealthy able to have everything on our plate. If that ni'mat is taking us towards more worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is a sign that this is a ni'mat and a barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if something is taking us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, driving us towards sins and making us abandon his commands of, uh, the commands of Allah, then that could be a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually angry with it. He's not happy with this. So this is one barakah and one ni'mat and one benefit of having taqwa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will Put baraka from what is coming from the above us and what is coming out of the ground so that rain to come on time crops to grow that on the time this is a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has put baraka in our life through the taqwa that we may have one more benefit of taqwa inshallah we'll mention we'll conclude that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلَّهُ مَخْرَجًا وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلَّهُ مَخْرَجًا means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he opens the doors of, doors, he opens the doors for us. He removes the difficulties for us. He opens the doors to remove ourselves from difficulties and remove difficulties from our life. Imam Azam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi, in his time, obviously he was an imam. Every time when you are closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more enemies you will have. The more you are accepted in the eyes of Allah, the more enemies and more hasidin you will have. So at that time, there used to be plot. They used to try to plot, uh, they made it plots against him. They were very jealous. So some people thought that, you know, how can we trap Imam Abu Hanifa, alayhi, how can we take him down? So Imam Abu Hanifa, alayhi, was once, he was walking. Once he was walking, this woman, she came out to ask him for help. Asking for help. Now this woman was, you know, you can say, one of those who used to spend her nights out in the wrong, in the wrong area. And the enemies had used her for this. So she came out asking for help. Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi didn't realize you have to tell her, somebody needs help, let me go and help. So she goes, you know, I need somebody to come into my home and help somebody at home. So Imam Hanifa rahmatullahi when he entered the house, the, enemy had, the enemies were hiding in that house. So they thought, Jalla, we've gripped him. And he is going in the daytime calling people towards Allah and in the nighttime he's spending his nights with this evil woman. So Jalla, you know, we're going to take him down now. Next day, they thought that Jalla, we'll take him to the court as well and jail and etc. So next day when Imam Muhanifa, sorry, in the night time they took him to the uh, prison. So they said that, you know, they, we can't have any, the courts are now open at the moment. So we can't come to any agreement. We'll do it, you know, we'll come uh, again tomorrow. We'll gather tomorrow and we'll come to a conclusion tomorrow. So in the night time, Abu Hanifa Rahmatullah is in this jail, he is in the cell and that woman was also there. Imam Muhanifa Rahmatullah had wuzu, so he put the musalla down, he put this chadar, whatever he had and he sought his salah. So this woman thought that, you know, I'm alone. He could do whatever he wants with me. And, you know, he's such a pious person and I'm being used for this purpose. So she, when he finished, she, she told him the story. That this was happened. I didn't need any help, but I was paid and etc. That, you know, so to trap you. So when Muhanifah Ramadan said, look, if you listen to me, you will be saved and I will be saved as well. So he came up with a plan. Now, as you said, that a person who's at taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors for him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this in his mind that he said to this woman that, look, what you do is that there's a God outside. Tell this God that 
um, Imam Abu Hanifa uh, uh, so tell this God that he needs some, uh, I need some help from home. So, uh, so this woman told the truth. So Imam Abu Hanifa came up with the, came up with the idea. And the idea is that you tell this God that I need something from my house. So you wear the burqa, you cover yourself and go to my home. When you go to my home, my wife will be there. You narrate the story to my wife, tell her to the burqa, put the burqa on and she comes to the cell. She comes to the cell. So she did this. The God didn't realize that this was happening. So she went to the house of Abu Hanifa, the wife of Abu Hanifa, put the burqa on and she came to the cell. Next morning, they went to the courts. The Hasidin and the enemies of Imam Hanifa were there. They were waiting, you know, this is the time where we can just take Imam Hanifa down. So when they're in front of the judge and the enemies narrated everything, that look, this is who Imam Hanifa, his true face is this, this, this. Imam Hanifa said, look, look, wait, wait. He's going to call my father-in-law. Go and call my father-in-law. So his father-in-law was called. And he said that, okay, ask my father-in-law who is wearing this veil, who is behind this veil. So the father-in-law looked and he said, this is my daughter. This is my daughter. This is my daughter. So this is where the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came. So he goes, look, I'm not spending my nights with anybody. She's my own legal wife. There's nothing wrong with that, spending my time with my legal wife. So this is the uh, here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when a person has taqwa inside his life, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will you know, inspire him, will help him and will assist him. And even though he thought that there's no light at the end of the tunnel, but when a person adopts taqwa, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors for him. And we ask, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to bring this taqwa in our life. Now, refraining from sins, we should try at most, our, you know, according to our ability and according to our strength in every aspect of our life. Every aspect of our life, we should think that what is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the times of happiness, in the time of sadness, in the time of grief, what is the command of Allah? We shouldn't be such, it shouldn't be said that we just follow the tradition and we just follow the culture. In the times of happiness, what is the hukam? What is the command? How did my Nabi um, exercise the happiness at that time? How did he carry out the happiness? For example, at the time of, uh, the time of marriage, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got married himself, his children got married. So we should study the seerat, that how did he get married? How did he marry his own children off? So it is our, for ourselves as well, everybody else who's listening as well, that what didn't my Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do at the time of marriage? As parent as well, we should think that what did my Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do at the time of marrying his own children? If we are going to be one of those who are going to be following the culture and we're going to think that if I don't do this, what am I going to face the community? What am I going to see in the community? If you're going to continue doing that, then remember our children will go 10 steps further. And we are already seeing this. We're already witnessing this. If you go back in 10 years' time, the weddings were as it was. There was less culture in there. There was less, you know, um, wrong happening in there. But now our children are going steps ahead of us. Are going steps ahead of us. So if we want to put a stop to this, we need to do it. Ourselves as well, those who are going to get married, they should think that why should I try to do something to please the others? La ma'asiyat al makhluq fi fi. There's no. The Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that we shouldn't please the makhluq in uh, in uh, uh, we shouldn't la ma'asiyat al khaliq la la ta'at al makhluq fi ma'asiyat al khaliq that we don't please the others and we please Allah subhanahu wa taala. We, we don't uh, uh, please the makhluq. Sorry, we, sh we shouldn't please the makhluq and displease the khaliq. We shouldn't please the makhluq, i.e. we shouldn't please the creation, but we should please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at the time of marriage, we should think that why should I follow the culture? If a person, you know, the next day or the day after, they're going to say that, okay, you didn't do this tradition, you didn't do this, it doesn't matter. If it brings the uh, anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should try our best to refrain from that. If we set an example, then others will follow. You know, in Preston is one of the uh, news article he mentioned that a non-Muslim, Non-Muslim, a girl around the age of 32 and the boy was around 30. The marriage was done within 4,000 pounds. 3,920 something pounds only. 120, 30 pounds was a dress, 70 pounds shoes. He's 100 and something pounds for the suit. It was only the room that cost them about 3,000 pounds. And the food was just normal food. And whatever people they need to invite, invited. The experience in that, she said that that marriage was so amazing that I experienced every moment of the marriage. 
I wasn't looking over to please anybody else. 4,000 pounds, less than 4,000 pounds, and I married was then. And she said that it was so simple. Everybody was happy. I experienced every moment, happiness and enjoyment in every moment of my life, in that marriage. You can do this as well, it's possible. Prophet did it, we can also do it. So we know in the time of happiness, how, did we, uh, how do, should we celebrate happiness? We should look at the seerat at the time of grief as well. We shouldn't just follow the traditions that what do people do at the time of grief? Are they you know, g- gathering together or are they setting a certain day that we should gather again? All of these things are not in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. For sunnah of the Prophet is that we should do salat sawab as many times as much as possible, whenever possible. We know we pray the dua, we pray any dua and we make dua for the forgiveness we make dua for you know the deceased and we make a salah sahab anytime possible. So we need to try to understand that what is the sunnat of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the time of happiness, at the time of distress and grief as well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to build this taqwa in our lives. These few benefits were mentioned and you know there are so many in this kitab. There is mentioned that if you look at the Quran there is around 27 fawaid and benefits of taqwa mentioned in the Quran. Around 27. Now, if you look at the ahadith, there'll be so many more. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to bring taqwa in our lives. Inshallah, next week we'll mention about how to build this taqwa in our life. That what are the ways and the methods of building the taqwa in our life? And then, inshallah, we'll continue the hadith as well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to bring taqwa in our life and follow the ways of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in his true form and make us one of those who are the followers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa from the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Allahumma ameen. جزاك الله خيرا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ما هو نور الله صلى الله محمد وعلى آله محمد وبارك وسلم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد الله لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون السلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين برحمة